is 23 years of age. She's from Hastings. Uh, she lives near the sea, but mm -hmm. she can't go into the sea. She can't take a bath. And um, I, I, it restricts her so many ways, because basically, simply getting touched by water causes her pain. And extreme pain there we're talking about extreme here. Extreme pain. It's... So, Ruth, the condition is known as... Oh, I'm not going to say it. Well, how, do you, how do you pronounce aquagenic... it, Nia? It's called aquagenic pruritus. Right. And it basically translates to an allergy to water. It's contact with water and it, I come up in an extreme burning itch. Now, we should also say, uh, you will see, or you may even hear, that Nia has got a little fan there. And explain to people, that's not because you're overly hot. What is that there to do? Um, so, it's there to prevent sweat because I am also allergic to my own body bodily fluids which contain water so I have allergic reactions to my own sweat, my own urine, um, my tears so it is just a case of trying to prevent these things from happening to deter the itch from starting um, before This is awful. I'm in pain. Everybody cries, everybody wheeze. Everybody what sweats. Would, what would <laughs> Most happen people. to you? You're telling me. Mm. What would happen to you if you cried? It's um it's a difficult one because I try not to deprive myself of the right to cry because I feel, you know, we're human, we all need to cry. But then I also, when I do cry, um, anywhere that the tears touch, so whether it's my cheeks, if it rolls down my neck, any surface that the tear touches will become itchy and it often comes up red on my face as well. And how would you describe, you said any water touching you um, is painful, how would you describe, can you describe that pain? So it's not so much that like if water, it's not that when water hits me, it's like a, it's not like a ouch, mm. it's more the, the thing that comes after it. So within five or ten minutes of yeah. being in contact with yeah. the water, I will feel my body start to burn and it will be like a slow itch and it will turn into a burning sensation, almost where it feels like my blood is hot and boiling, um, but it's an unitchable itch. It's not something that can't I can... scratch it. You can't get, get any I relief. Can't get it's, it's, to it sounds no. torture. And listening to you there, Dr George Moncrief, uh, live from his home in Oxford. Uh, Dr McCreef, he's a... He's a top man in dermatology. And, um, Doctor, what are you making of what you're hearing? I've never heard of this before. Have you heard of this before? Well, thank you very much. Um, I wouldn't describe myself as a top man in dermatology. I'm a GP who has a keen interest in dermatology. I, yes, this is a rare disease. It really is. And isn't it miserable? I mean, can you just imagine how awful that must be for Nia? Uh, there, there are two conditions that get confused a bit. There's aquagenic urticaria, which is basically you get nettle rash when you come into contact with water. And that tends to affect young people starting usually in their teens. And they get a rash which lasts for a few hours and the rash is incredibly itchy. And then there's what Nia's describing, I think, which is aquagenic pruritus. It just means, yes, well, that could be aquagenic urticaria, just about. Um, but that's incredibly rare. Perhaps one in 250 million people is what the, the books say, um, although it's probably more common. I, I'm not sure every case has been documented. Uh, aquagenic pruritus, which is what she says she has, is where you get this in terrible, intense itch within a few minutes of contact with any form of water, salt water, sea water, um, sea water ordinary water, tears and so on. And it can last for several hours and become incredibly painful and it's not easy to manage either. It, it, it is a really rotten disease. Yeah, and we don't, how, to be honest, do you... just don't understand. Doctor, yeah. we, we just got your vision is out of sync here. We're just going to press a button and get that sorted out as we go back and talk to yeah. uh, Nia. Well, I was going to say, well, while we're redialing the doctor, how do you deal with that? And I think a lot of people watching will go, well, how do you wash? Yeah, so um, that was one of the main challenges when when it started happening every single time I came into contact with water it really um, especially when I started having the allergic reactions to my urine and sweat and stuff it they are things that are completely unavoidable um, so I think that's why I started a YouTube channel and I took my story online just to show people quite what my everyday is like because it is so difficult it's you know if you think of how your your life goes you would wake your day goes you would wake up in the morning go to the toilet and then you would maybe 
have a shower, brush your teeth. And, you know, it seems that everything that I have to do in my day can, can we cause saw, me You pain. saw you there um, of when you've had your shower, kind of writhing around on the bed. Is, is that writhing in pain? Yes, so it's... Um, it's just that it completely takes over my body. It is a full body burn and it leaves me immobile in that time. I can't walk around because I, I almost lose control of my, you know, I, I lose my... Um, yeah, I lose. Mobility. Yeah, I, I, it must yeah. be exhausting as well. It is absolutely exhausting. I spend a lot of my time in recovery simply because allergic reactions are draining, and yeah. when they are so persistent, you know, a lot of the time I'll be having an allergic reaction, say from having going to the toilet or something, and then I could break out into a, a sweat separately, and it means that that allergic reaction almost jumps back to the start, mm. and it is prolonged because of that. So yeah, it I is really I just feel really so difficult. sorry listening to you for this. I'm assuming you, you don't work. I'm assuming you can't go to a workplace. I stopped working when I started having the allergic reactions to urine. Yeah. Um, I kept at it for as long as I possibly uh, could, I, but sure. it became impossible. I, I want to bring the doctor back in. We've re-established yes. his line and um, we're, we're very tight for time, unfortunately. But doctor, is this curable? Is there any hope you can offer Nia? Uh, it generally, I hope the timing's better now, it generally does improve with time. So as the years go by, it tends to get better, but we don't really understand what's causing it. Strictly speaking, it's not an allergy. Um, it's no more an allergy than when you get stung by nettles. That's an allergic allergy to nettles themselves. You get nettle rash from nettles. And the same way here, water's causing this intensely painful um, itch and, and pain that she has. There are drugs that we're using, but part of the problem is we just don't understand exactly how the whole thing is mediated in the body, why water's doing this. It, it tends to be only water on contact with the skin rather than in the mouth, fortunately. And we are, what it needs is a lot more research. And uh, unfortunately, with so few cases, it's really hard to get the numbers together to, to, to come to get up with any plans for managing it. Doctor, thank you for your take on things and your diagnosis. Appreciate that. We've got to say goodbye to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Unia, uh, thank you for telling us about your story. I mean, it, it's, it must be so, so difficult for you to get through. Um, and I know with your YouTube channel, you hope that other people, if they're suffering, can be Absolutely. in touch and you'll have your, your own kind of community. Um, Absolutely. And I know you've had to have that fan on the whole time because you were worried about our studio lights making you sweat. I was getting really sweat, hot so as soon as I walked you've in. You've been OK, though. You're I okay. am OK. Do, do you know Ruth has a fan as well, but it's for different reasons. I said, yeah. She, she's always... <laughs> It's important oh. for me to get in there as well that um, I have been in treatment under the NHS okay. for a long time. All right.